As a football club, it's great to buy some players on the cheap. Fans also love a great bargain. There's no better feeling than to brag about the player that's doing really well. So bargains are great, but you know what's better than a bargain? You sign a player on a free. You don't have to pay a transfer fee, which is absolutely great. Those things tend to get a little bit expensive, especially nowadays. Every player that's somewhat capable of kicking a ball is already worth like 70, 80 million. But it got me thinking, I thought it would be fun to make an 11 of players out of contract, but I'm going to limit myself to the Premier League only. So in this video, we're going to be looking at an out of contract 11 in 2023 of players only in the Premier League. So we're going to look at some players of your club that might be leaving on a free, but this might also be an opportunity for your club to get a great player without having to pay a transfer fee. So definitely watch the entire video in order to find out if your club should act on one of those players. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. We're starting off with a goalkeeper and this immediately is a high profile name. To be fair, all of these players are actually high profile because I was actually surprised that a lot of great players in the Premier League this season could play their last for their club because many have their contract expiring in 2023. Gea has been at Manchester United for a lot of years and with a lot I really mean a lot. I don't know if there are many players in the Premier League right now that have been with their club for 12 seasons. I still remember in the beginning everybody was laughing at this guy. Everybody thought that after Edwin van der Sar this guy was just a laughing stock but he actually turned out to be a pretty decent goalkeeper. At times he was absolutely ridiculous. He had some amazing seasons with the club but also he had his fair share of mistakes and sometimes he just has to run of a few games where things just don't really seem to go his way but all in all i think he's a great goalkeeper he's only 31 years old so definitely still has a few good years ahead of him but i might say something controversial here because i think that it might actually be better for manchester united to part ways with the gea i will be the first one to say that he's a great goalkeeper don't get me wrong but especially with eric ten Hag there right now he wants to have a goalkeeper that's also capable of playing football from the back and the gea isn't necessarily the man that's capable of doing that so as strange as it sounds this might be a great opportunity for manchester united to look into a different direction and maybe get a goalkeeper that would suit their style of play a little bit better, especially under Eric Ten Hag. Next up is his Manchester United teammate, Diogo Dalot. Diogo Dalot has already been at Manchester United since 2018. I thought he joined a little bit later, but this already says that in his first few years at Manchester United, he didn't really make a big impression. Well, definitely not on me. The club bought him for around 22 million, which was a little bit over his market value. His market value then dipped a little bit, but since the start of the season, it has been rising again. And right now, he's currently worth 28 million euros. And in all fairness, it makes sense. The guy has been decent for Manchester United. He played every single minute so far in the Premier League. And after a few years where he didn't really make a big impression, he even got loaned out to AC Milan in 2020. But right now, things are looking up for Diogo Dalot. Apparently, Barcelona is interested in signing him on a free. But let's be honest, they're literally interested in every player that they can get on a free. But in my opinion, I definitely think that Manchester United should try to extend his contract. He has a decent transfer value, so even if they don't want him to be the first right back, they can still sell him for a good fee. Are there better options as a right back? Yes, clearly there are. And I personally think that Manchester United will explore those options at one point but right now they have a decent player and other positions definitely need strengthening first I would say keep this guy around there are definitely way worse options out there and when you can just look for a different option but for now just keep the guy but if for some reason he leaves the club on a free I'm pretty sure that a few Premier League clubs could actually do with his arrival the first center back that we're going to talk about is Kaglar Sejinchu I still remember in his first season with the club he was absolutely unbelievable for Leicester I literally thought that they found yet another gem and together with Fofana these two would be Leicester City's midfield field for some years but literally i thought that the two would be a great partnership for leicester but unfortunately for the club the two turned out to be quite injury prone right now siyinchu is injured again he hasn't played a single minute of premier league football so far this season for the club he played one game in the efl cup though but yeah again another disappointing season for siyinchu last season also wasn't that great for him either and you can definitely see that he was a great player after his first season his market value was 45 million euros but right now it just keeps decreasing it's already at 28 million and i'm pretty sure Sure that by the end of the season it will be much lower than that if it continues like this. Leicester probably thought that they would make a great profit on the player after signing him in 2018 for only 21 million euros. As it looks right now they might make a loss on this guy and they might actually lose him for free because his contract runs out next summer. Again I would advise Leicester City to keep this guy purely because they don't really have a lot of other options at center back and we all saw how good he was so something in me still says that he could reach that level again. Next up is Yari Mina. Many people said that he would be a great defender but Barcelona would keep him for years to come but eight months later he already got sold to Everton who for some reason paid more than 30 million euros to sign him while Barcelona only paid 12 and for some weird reason within eight months Everton almost paid three times as much for him I don't understand I don't really think that he's that great of a defender okay I'm, I don't know I might be a little bit too harsh on him because he's been injured for quite a long time it's been two and a half months since Mina last played for Everton he also was once branded as La Liga's biggest flop but on the other hand statistically Mina is very important to the Everton squad 
squad and especially their defense of course it's time to move on to the last player in defense and it's another manchester united player because luke shaw's contract is running out in 2023 he isn't manchester united starting left back anymore since malasia has arrival he has to share his spot with the dutchman malasia started the season off great but in recent games he had a little bit of a dip in form and again some people might not agree with this but i still think that luke shaw is a better defender than malasia he joined manchester united in 2014 becoming the most expensive teenager in the entire history of the sport at the time of course because since then a lot of teenagers have moved for big sizable fees but just like with the gay his time at manchester united has been up and down he had a few great seasons he had a few bad seasons which you can also see from his market value you can see it fluctuate up and down all the time but after making an increase the season before last one last season made his transfer value fall again it's currently at 30 million and the guy's only 27 years old still i do think that he's a great defender and for him personally i would go ahead and leave manchester united maybe he will not get a club at the same level of manchester united but i'm pretty sure that some decent clubs will be in the market for him but i don't think that his inconsistency is good enough for manchester united especially in an important position like left back in defense manchester united just needs stability there and i don't know if luke shaw can actually offer the club that it's time to move on to the midfield and there's a lot of quality in here and in the forward department as well but i do have to tell you some technical stuff right now because i had to adjust the starting 11 a little bit we're playing with four at the back two holding midfielders a left winger a right winger and two strikers because later on we're going to talk about two strikers and i literally wasn't capable of picking one over the other if you already know which two players i'm talking about let me know in the comments down below but before that let's talk about the holding midfielders and the first one is angolo kante and if i were chelsea give this guy exactly what he wants because you don't replace kante it is absolutely impossible this guy is truly one of a kind he's absolutely ridiculous i think he's one of the best holding midfielders in the entire world this guy counts for two on the pitch so definitely chelsea keep this guy this guy was a pivotal part in the chelsea squad that won the 2021 champions league he also helped them to the 2017 premier league title after winning it with leicester city the season before i'm saying it like it's a normal thing but we all remember how absolutely crazy that run was and it shows that kante can just be a great addition to any team before i forget this guy is also a world cup winner unfortunately at the tournament this year we will not be seeing kante because an injury will rule him out of the tournament and that's why we immediately have to talk about the only flaw of his career that has occurred lately because in the last couple of years kante has been injured on and off and it's just such a shame to see such a great player not being able to play because of injury so unfortunately he has become a little bit more unreliable these last couple of seasons but still when he plays he's one of a kind you cannot replace this guy and i really hope that chelsea will not think of doing that reportedly kante loves living in london so he doesn't want to move there are a few other options in london that would be very happy to get him to the club the likes of arsenal tottenham but chelsea let's be real is it really a smart idea to strengthen your rivals i don't think so keep this guy at the club and don't make any more problems for yourself next up is a player that will most likely leave it will probably be best for his career the only thing is the club where he's currently at will lose a lot of money because if this guy's contract wouldn't run out i'm pretty sure that he would command a big fee the player i'm talking about is yuri tielemans a guy who has been a great talent for years now people were talking about him since he was like 16 but the guy is still only 25 years old but he's definitely ready for a next step in his career last season the likes of arsenal and manchester united were already in the market for him but i don't know what happened there maybe the club wasn't willing to let him go or the clubs just didn't offer enough but next summer it will probably be way easier because his contract runs out so every club that wants him could sign him on a free i personally think that he would be a great addition to this arsenal squad and it would probably be best for him to leave leicester city as well and he's definitely ready for a next step in his career only thing like i said leicester probably aren't that happy with him his current market value is 45 million and if they sold him last summer they would probably command a larger fee for him but if he doesn't extend his contract next summer he's going to leave them on a free so the question is who is the winner there to lose out on that much money while your club isn't doing that well financially seems like a big risk to me next up is wilfried zaha this guy's always linked with the move away from crystal palace but in the end he always stays at the club but i do have a feeling that next summer things might be different at the age of 29 if he wants to leave crystal palace he has to do it next summer by now everybody knows that this guy is a great player and he might be a little bit too good for crystal palace at one point there were talks that clubs were willing to pay like 80 million for this guy i don't know that's a little bit outrageous but his market value is around 40 million it used to be 60 so that isn't actually that far off of his peak but crystal palace are probably really happy that they were able to keep this guy for so long he's been at the club since 2015 and he consistently helped crystal palace stay up in the premier league comfortably as well so losing him definitely will be a big blow for them but the club that ends up signing him will actually get a great player a guy that's capable of scoring goals as well if you look at the goal scored in the premier league since the start of last season i think he's like in the top five or something they're a great asset for crystal palace and the likes of ace roma chelsea and arsenal are actually linked with the guy but i'm pretty sure that if he actually leaves on a free 
actually many other clubs who also tried to sign him. The left winger of the squad is Marcus Rashford and for me it's pretty difficult to imagine Rashford anywhere else than Manchester United. He had his footballing education there, he made his debut there all the way back in 2016. He had some unbelievable periods but he also had a few periods where it didn't really go that great for Marcus. For example last season wasn't his best but so far this season things have been a little bit better. Five goal contributions in 11 Premier League games. He has another three goal contributions in two Europa League games but again with many of these Manchester United players he just is inconsistent and that's not what the club needs. Subjectively speaking the club should do everything to keep this guy. He's one of their own his market value is 60 million euros so it represents a lot of value and he's only still 24 years old so I don't know parting ways with Rashford right now I don't think it's a good idea for Manchester United and I have a strange feeling that this guy wouldn't really fit in anywhere else than Manchester United. He has almost 100 career goals in just over 300 appearances for the club. He already played for England 46 times scoring 12 goals in the process and I'm pretty sure that this guy still has a lot to offer. So Manchester United if you're smart get this contract done as soon as possible. And now it's time to move on to the strikers and the first of the two is Roberto Firmino. This guy was part of an unbelievable front three at Liverpool for years together with Salah and Mane. Honestly one of the best front threes in the entire history of the sport. And the joy that this guy plays with is unmet. His assist in the Champions League against Rangers if I remember correctly with the back heel was also just a great example of that. This guy basically won everything with Liverpool. The Champions League, the Premier League, the Club World Cup, you know many other things. It seems like this is the last season of Firmino at the club. This summer Mane already left and next summer the second part of that great front three might be leaving the club but I do think that the club wants to look for a different option, a younger option as well. But let's be real wherever this guy goes he will be probably one of their star players because who wouldn't want this guy in his team. And the last player that we're going to talk about is Chris Cristiano Ronaldo. And now you guys might understand why I wasn't able to pick between these two strikers. Because when Cristiano Ronaldo is part of the list, you obviously have to talk about him. Last season, Ronaldo had a great comeback to Manchester United, scoring 18 times, becoming the third top scorer in the Premier League. But this season, things are way different for Ronaldo. He only played 30% of the available minutes in the Premier League, scoring just one, as Eric Ten Hag clearly favors other players. And it has been pretty tough on the 37-year-old. Currently, he's not in the squad of Manchester United. After refusing to come on as a sub against Tottenham and leaving the stadium before the end of the game and let's be honest that's not great behavior but I do understand that if you let a guy of Cristiano Ronaldo's statue warm up twice and then only give him three minutes if you ask me that's not the way to deal with one of the best players the sport has ever seen but Ten Hag wants to turn the club around and Cristiano Ronaldo is not in his plans so it's probably best for both him and the club to just leave which should have happened this summer already but as we all know no club was in for the guy as weird as that still sounds but another seven months of this I don't really think that that's great for both Ronaldo and Manchester United so in my opinion the best solution would just to rip up his contract and just let him leave in January because this situation is not going to get any better if you ask me. Ronaldo needs to play, he's 37 years old. It's clearly not going to happen at Manchester United and Eric ten Hag doesn't even want to play him. So as crazy as it sounds, Ronaldo might actually become a free agent earlier than summer 2023. So guys that's the video done. Let me know which player out of this list you would like at your club. As always like the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, click my videos on the end screen right now and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.